Come on, girls. You can find that gate. So close. Topping, eh? Man, does it seem to have got some people wound up this year. Bloody hell. I don't know. So I thought I'd uh, do a bit of video on it and uh, show you why we do it. So those ewes down there, that's my big mob ewes. They have been in this paddock for a long time. We won't go into detail, but they've had about 12 days in here. Um, they're going to that one there next, which is good. So this paddock got pretty rough and pretty out of hand just, just the way the season went. We got a massive growth spirit. Couldn't stay on top of the feed and then it gets a bit long. So what we've got now is a paddock that's pretty well eaten out. So as you can see this this is not grass, right? This is a product of grass, but this is not grass. This is stalk. And at the end of the stalk, where's one over here? This is the plant's reproductive stage. So at the top of the stalk we have the seeds. They're quite valuable little things. If we could harvest them, uh, we'd make a lot of money. But uh, the problem is with sheep paddocks. This is looking pretty good here to be fair, but we do get weed grasses in here as well. And yeah, and it's just uh, something that's not worth doing. So anyway, that is not grass. This is still grass. Now I could hold them in here to eat it, but then they've eaten this bit down pretty hard and this bit down very hard. So we don't want to push them too hard. The general idea is that we uh, push them to try and maintain their body weight because these girls are in reasonably good nick. We don't want them getting fat just yet. We'll use them as a tool to clean up the feed, get rid of the rough stuff, and get some nice feed there to put weight on lamps. But we do have to be careful, because um, obviously we don't want them going backwards. So that's why you get this dry stuff, crappy stuff at the end. We just mow it and we forget about it. But anyway, we better get these girls in the move. They don't seem too keen. So there we go, there's 1,700 ewes on the move. Sit down, slum! Uh, going through that gateway down there, and I've got to move like here right now, so I'll see you in a minute. So, a little bit of a dodgy crossing here. Just got to be careful these girls. Get up, Pearl! Ooh, she does my head sometimes at the wrong time. But, uh, yeah, so these girls are going to go, hopefully in a nice string, no dogs behind them, through that gate and join those ones. Just got to be very careful. They're a bit crazy at this time of year. Sorry, just got a bit nervous here for a minute. There's a creek either side of this crossing and uh, got a bit more control over them right here. Woo! Look at them go. Still being pretty safe over there. Hello. And there you go, the shifted ewes. So, uh, they'll be happy in here for a while. There's lots and lots of crap eating here. So, that's where they came from. Gonna top that this afternoon, we'll show you that. But just while we're in here, I thought I'd show you, because that paddock's like, I think it's done three summers. 
this one's done like seven so and also this is a really poor part of the paddock here so that's ryegrass see that you can read it on a little bit of this but uh, ryegrass yeah where are we dog's tail that one's called Need to focus there there we go um this one this is a horrible grass where are we going to get a focus on this we're not there we go try that where are we no not going to focus you get the rough idea anyway that's called brown top and it's horrible crap just horrible dry low quality low yielding stuff but loves to choke everything out we've got a few other bits and pieces around um I'm not sure whether that's Coxfoot or just a bit of opened up dog's tail. Not too sure. Yeah, anyway, that's sort of what we're doing. So we're going to mow all that, but this stuff down here, you can sort of see. So, yeah. Bit of clover in there. Nice to be clover flare there. But all this rough stuff. So like that, that wee bit there to be fair, we'd, we'd call that lamb feed. That's, that's reasonable, but not much of the paddock looks like that when you've got all this stuff in here. And this horrible shit here. Just a horrible looking leaf. Not really gonna focus on it very well, but yeah, just just rough. Rough and it's the bottom section of the paddock. I'll take you to the top and show you what it looks like. So here we go at the top. You can see the old user uh they're not exactly ravenously hungry, are they? I thought they might have been starving after coming out of there, but uh apparently not. Anyway, we'll have a look at the speed here. So, top of the paddock, this is quite nice. This is what sheep are shocking for. So, big paddock this one. Not as big as that one, admittedly. There's 15 hectares there, or uh, what are we, uh, 38 acres in the old money. And this one here is 12, 12 and a half hectares, so roughly 30. But um, yeah, paddock rolls way down there, way down there, and way down there. What happens with sheep? Sheep love to camp at the top of the hill. I don't know whether it's a safety thing or whether it's a... I don't know what it is. But anyway, what happens is we put a whole lot of fertiliser on over the whole paddock. Uh, try and do it nice and accurately and evenly. And then every day the sheep spread out over the paddock and they graze it. And then at night they all go to the top of the hill and they sleep. Now obviously sheep manure is great fertiliser. It's an awesome fertiliser. Best thing for soil out there. But uh, yeah, so this is what happens. So same video, uh, same paddock rather as that last clip. And uh, look at this, we've got some long grass here, similar length to that other stuff, maybe not quite as long, but look at it, look how nice and lush and green it is. And you notice with the seed heads, we've only really got ryegrass, we haven't got any of that other, other weedy stuff that we don't like. See there's one there that's starting to dry a wee bit, and actually, 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 did I just see, maybe not, no I thought I saw an ergot in there, but no there we go. Right, hang on a sec, I'm just going to try and get this to focus. Where are we? We'll jump up. Hang on, we'll go to the bike, because this is quite important. Right, so I've just sort of broken that, the top half of the seat head away. But you see this fella over here, just with my fingers pointing, he's got a ugly looking black thing in there. And that's called an ergot, and they are, whoa. I think they're a fungus, but anyway, very, very nasty for livestock. Now, they won't selectively eat it, so they won't, uh, we don't have to worry about it right now being in, in this. But if we were to make baleage out of a paddock that had heavy seed on it, and it had that on it, heavily, we would have to consider disposing of all that baleage. Because, uh, yeah, it's pretty nasty, it causes blood poisoning and it just clots. Is it clot? I think it clots. Anyway, it just stops the blood flow to limbs and it's bloody horrible. I've never actually seen the effects of it myself, but uh, we hear about them from vets all the time. Just one issue with ryegrass. Anyway, back to the actual ryegrass itself. We'll get there guys. Sort of drawing on a wee bit, aren't I? Keep going off another tangents, but we'll get there. So anyway, like I was saying, nice lush green feed. See there's there's a patch there, has got a wee bit of weed grass in it, you can see there's a little bit of brown top and stuff, but the grass itself in there is looking pretty good. And most of that is because the soil fertility up here is awesome. Whereas down the bottom of the paddock where it's all been carted from, April. 
April. There you go. There's not so much. Quiet. So anyway, yeah, nice, lush, green. Um, gets absolutely scalped up here. The ewes just camp up here and deck it right out, which is the other problem. They don't do that at the bottom of the paddock. But yeah, hard to believe it's the same paddock, isn't it? And it's only, what did I say? It's seven or eight years old. Seven years old, maybe. So, yeah. Hey, uh, none of you guys feel like buying me a front mower at all, do you? You really appreciate it, eh? So anyway, we're up here topping now. We're uh, I don't know, three quarters of the way through this paddock, but I'm going to knock off for the night because it's taken me about four hours so far and I've had a guts full of it. But uh, this is what we're up to. So, you can see here, we've cut the top. Get me up nice and low, and yeah, it's... Can't get the camera to see it, there we go. Just taking it all down nice and short. So as you can see, there's um, not much line here. Very, very light toppings here, which is what we want. Must be the thistle stalk, ugly bloody thing. Plenty of them around, like uh, that. But it'll just rot back into the ground. Not really doing any harm now. There's the old mower. Just a three meter hay mower, conventional mower, whatever you want to call it, disc mower. Um, Using knives on it the other day. Come on, camera, turn around. Getting a wee bit dull, but not too bad. And a new set of belts because it'll chew them out. So, yeah, pretty basic, pretty simple. So, yeah, pretty happy with what the user done here. Um, done a pretty good job at this end of the paddock, but we'll head to the other end and I'll show you the problem. So, we were just down there, just through there. Um, as you can see, when we come up here, the old toppings are a wee bit heavier. There's uh, a bit more of it sitting around. Sorry, I'm having trouble getting this camera to do what I want it to. But yeah, so we've got these bigger piles of stuff. There's some nice juicy thistles in there hurting my fingers. And uh, this, yeah, there's no feed value in it. I mean, it's 90% stalk, 7% thistles, and we'll say 3% grass. So I just sort of struggle with the the idea of baling it. A lot of people have said to bale it, but we've um, shown you that error got earlier on. That's dodgy stuff, we don't want that in bales. And also, it just it has no feed value. So, we're just going to let it turn back into organic matter, rot back into the ground, and uh, I guess in some ways you could say that's a little bit of regenerative farming. Oh, check it out, would you? The stuff Bart's nightmares are made of. What a machine. She does work a wee bit hard with that big mower on the back though, I mean crikey. Yeah. This one's actually got 270 horsepower and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle. Might need another mower or two. The old girls are uh, losing a bit of weight here I'd say. They're not, they're not holding condition and uh, yeah, look, they've done pretty well down here. We can top this. There's bugger all feed left in here. <coughs> I must have that zoomed in still. There we go. Um, yeah, well, there's not a lot of feed left here. We can we can happily waste what's there. But I'll take you and show you the rest of it. So this stuff here at the top of the paddock's even better. Yeah, great. Shoot out just nicely. It should come, come back real nice from this. But uh, now we'll head down the bottom of the paddock for a look and we'll show you the problem. Look at all this, would you? What a waste. Bloody hell. Now, we're talking about seed heads the other day, and some of this video, I know, but uh, we're a few days ahead here. Not much ryegrass there. There's one. One there. Most of it's crap. Because the sheep don't want to come down here, uh, it's the boundary fence right. Uh, where are we? Can't even see. Runs up there. Somewhere up there. Um, so, because of that, We've made the very expensive decision, but uh, hopefully long term profitable, to split this 12 and a half hectare paddock into three roughly four hectare sections um, to try and be able to control this a bit better. So, yeah, it's going to cost a bit. We're about, we do it ourselves, I think we're about $8,000 a kilometre, and this paddock will have, oh, the best part is seven or eight hundred metres of fence go up in it, um, to split it in three. 
So it does cost a wee bit, but we just need to get it done to stop this happening. Because yeah, we're just we're wasting opportunity here. Yeah, we've got ground in here that's not growing very well. That's beautiful tussocks, would you? Man, they're cool. Love those things. Um, yeah, wasting potential because the fertilizer's not staying down here. They just keep carting it up the top, and the so we're not growing as much feed. We're not growing the quality of feed. It's basically wasted land for six months of the year, and uh, that's not on. So yeah, let's spend some money. Based on what I've seen there, I've decided no bugger it. Poor girls, they can get a shift. They can go and have some nice fresh tucker and uh, enjoy themselves for a couple of days. And they're off. Yeah, I'm... they always look worse on a wet day, but I'm just not massively happy with the condition on these girls right now. They've only got one more rough paddock to. Uh, it's a broken wire in that fence too. One more broken wire to. Um, one more broken wire. One more rough paddock, properly rough paddock to clean up. It's going to be a bit of hard work, but then they should be under some pretty good feed for the rest of the season. Because, uh, yeah, we do need to work on getting some weight on these girls. Go, girls, take it easy. There we go. A couple of the neighbours had rode into here, so I hope they stay behind back where they were. It happens a wee bit sometimes. Yeah. I'll be enjoying that grass out there anyway when they settle down. Look at that. Out there and eating straight away. It's been a horrible season for quality this year. And this right here is the result of the topping. This is what happens when you top. This was done quite a bit while ago. So as you can see, clover in there everywhere. Awesome clover. Plenty of flowers still around. That grass is just getting a wee bit long. This has been grass for a while. But yeah, that is why we top. Because this is the result. Wee bit of, yeah, all ryegrass here. A wee bit of goose grass. Yeah, not all ryegrass there. But yeah, as you can see, oops, across the paddock. Nice little bit of white clover flare everywhere. Beautiful lamb fattening feed. This is probably a wee bit long. But uh, those cattle over there, where are we? Over there, are going to come in here now. And uh, they'll enjoy this. And so will some lambs in a week or so. Big beefy's looking good. Well, uh, what are they now? About 16 months, I suppose. So, only a couple of months to go, guys. Bloody thistles. Bloody thistles. So, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Um, bit of a look at, yeah, pasture management on a sheep farm. It's not always the easiest thing. And uh, sometimes the more grass you have, the harder it is, which is, yeah, not what we'll be saying in the middle of winter. But right now, it certainly is a bit challenging. So, Hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers guys.